I think that we're all a little frustrated by the closure of this area. This was a, a key trail that added a lot of um, great destination points for hikers from the very somewhat easier Weeping Rock Trail to the more strenuous Observation Point Trail. Um, however, due to the volume of debris on this trail um, and the risks associated with clearing it, uh, we are being very deliberative as we determine risk and what those look like and as we determine what it will take to clear this trail. It's logistically very complicated. Um, those 12,000 cubic yards of material are on a very, very steep slope. Um, they're sitting at the angle of repose, which means if you move material to clear the trail, more material is going to fall down behind it and fill it. Uh, most of this work will have to be done from the top of the trail, working its way down, which means much of this material will be have to move multiple times. Um, what we're doing right now is using a couple of very powerful tools, water, time, and gravity, to begin moving material down. Um, we have been monitoring this trail um, since shortly after the rock avalanche occurred. Using an earlier LIDAR, we could detect movement. And a lot of this material is moving down slope. Um, where I am standing shortly after the avalanche was probably about 10 feet lower than it is now. Um, material is coming down, um, and it is as it rains. Um, this landscape changes regularly. Um, so we are monitoring those changes. Um, we are monitoring additional small rock falls on the trail. We're using several different techniques. Um, one of them is working with the Utah Geological Survey. We're mapping out the rock fall and looking at how the debris is moving down the slope um, and, and also looking at the frequency and size of smaller rock falls. Um, this trail was closed due to an earlier rock fall. We've documented several other small rock falls since it has been closed. Um, so we're trying to get a sense of the frequency of both small and large rockfall events in the area. Working with some scientists um, out from USGS and from Utah Tech, we dug some trenches into the slope and removed some material that we will date using optically stimulated luminescence dating. That technique basically lets you know when a mineral was last exposed to light. So we're trying to get a better sense of when the last really big rockfall event occurred here can tell that it probably did, just given the debris slope and what it looks like, and what it looked like in cross-section as we dug into it. But we would like to know a little bit more how frequently these big landscape scale events are occurring in this area. <laughs>